What up, y'all? Welcome to the Speaky Cloud Podcast. I am your host, Mike Sizz. I do greatly apologize for not delivering an episode this Tuesday, as always. <clears throat> I, I thought I um fulfilled my five free hours that I received on Spreaker. Um, to keep it a buck with y'all niggas, I'm 100% broke right now until February. I will be able to pay so I can do shit monthly for y'all, you know, weekly. But, um, you know what I mean? Um, that you, you get charge monthly for, uh, doing a podcast. So I'm going to do that shit so I can keep doing this. So as I said on my Conway Go album review on the last podcast, I said, y'all probably won't hear from me f- until February, but. I have a half an hour left, y'all, so I'm going to try to, you know, break this down and throw it up on there. God forbid if I go over, then this will be on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, and then it'll be on Spreaker in February. So, either way, y'all still get a new podcast, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, um, this is going to be a little different. I just thought of this, yo. going to be a good episode, um... Without these four iconic hip hop figures, there wouldn't be no the notorious B. I. G. They'd be no Jay Z. They'd be no Nas Eminem. Any other historical figure in hip-hop that came after the 80s in my personal opinion now <clears throat> there'll be no tupac either in my opinion now even though all these iconic mcs i'm about to name and to do the whole episode on is from the east coast tupac was definitely influenced on east coast hip-hop so you don't believe me listen to old school tupac is from new york originally so, there'd be no Tupac either, in my opinion. In my opinion, this is the big fall of the late 80s, and fuck it, the big fall in hip-hop, you know? A lot of people say the big fall is what? The Notorious B.I.G., Jay-Z, Nas, M, you know, a Pac or whatever the fuck, but to me, this is the big fall because... You know, without these niggas I'm about to name, there'll be no <clears throat> the artists I just named. You know what I mean? They wouldn't. And necessarily, I'll be honest, I think Jay-Z, Nas, and Big, even Tupac have better albums <laughs> than some of these iconic legends about the name. But either way... They wouldn't be who they are today without these dudes. And these dudes put out some iconic albums. Don't get it twisted. I'm just saying I do prefer some of the artists' um, work over these guys. But, you know, it is what it is. No no fucking shade. Not sliding them at all. I'm talking about the big four, in my opinion, of hip-hop, which is Cool G Rap, Rakim, KRS One and Big Daddy Kane. All right, these <laughs> these dudes are beyond influential. You know, there would even be no Black Thought. You know, Black Thought of the Roots. You know, that if these niggas didn't exist, you know, they are so influential. Any any nigga that came out after the eighties, you know what I mean, names these dudes as influences. You know. Especially on the East Coast. Even on the West Coast, you get some niggas say rock him. You know, hip-hop in general, they are so influential. You know? And today, I'll be going, I'll be ranking them. I'll be ranking the big four of the late 80s and maybe in hip-hop in general. So, you know, I'm going to hit y'all with my opinion on who's better. And who's my basically my favorite? You know, I'll be going through the discographies as well. You know, so stay tuned for that. 
And as I said, I want to get into it quick, so let's do it, you know. Coming in at number four, in my personal opinion, is Big Daddy Kane. Okay, now niggas might chew my head off for this, but Kane is my least favorite of the big four. Not saying he's whack at all or nothing like that. It's my personal opinion. Now, straight off the gate, 1988. One of the greatest years in hip-hop history, in my opinion. 88 is phenomenal. So many classics, you know. I can go on and on, <laughs> you know. It takes a nation of millions to hold us back. The Great Adventures of Slick Rick. Um, this individual's album, Long Live the Cane. Uh, by All Means Necessary. Light as a Rock. Um, so on and so forth. I can go forever, you know what I mean? But, um... So out the gate with uh, 1988, Long Live the Cane. As I said, I believe in my first episode, Long Live the Cane is one of the first hip-hop albums I ever heard, right along with Yo Bum Rush the Show by Public Enemy. And this album is just full of rhymes for days and hella fucking bars and just witty punchlines and... A display of lyricism that is second to none at that particular time, you know what I mean? But Rock Kim was out, so <laughs> well, it's hard to say, but it was in its own lane of like, yo, this is unfuckwittable at that time, you know what I mean? But Long Live the Cane is flat out my favorite Big Daddy Kane album. Just amazing. Raw, ain't no half stepping, just rhyming with biz. That whole shit is just fucking fantastic. Absolutely love it. There's, there's nothing bad to say about that album. I like everything about it. Love the album cover. Love the album. Fantastic. Fantastic. As I, as I said, my favorite Big Daddy Kane release, man. Then we get to 1989 and he drops It's a Big Daddy Thing. And that album is fucking amazing too, man. Wrath of Kane, Smooth Operator. All that shit, man. Just absolute classic album. To me, um, Long Live the Kane and It's a Big Daddy Thing is his greatest work. Um, the dude is just amazing on both of those albums. Nothing bad to say about him at all. Um, I love the album cover too. You know, Kane with the, with the fade, the flat top, you know what I mean? And, um, the high top fade, chilling with some bad bitches, rocking the gold fucking dookie chains and shit. Love that album cover, and that album is just fucking great. Um, great, great shit on there. To me, that's like his second best work. And then we get to 1990, man. Taste of chocolate. Uh. Not too keen on this album. Taste of Chocolate is just... It's not that good, man. The album cover is, is suspect. I don't really like it that much, to be honest with you. Uh, there's, there's some good songs on here, man. Okay. Uh, But overall... Oh, it, it's trash. That fucking Barry White song, All of Me... Ooh, man, fucking terrible. But there's some absolute bangers on here, if I can remember correctly. Maybe two or three that I really liked, but overall, I, I, I didn't rock with this album that much. Um, Not that good, in my opinion. <clears throat> to be honest with you, you know what I mean? Uh, not that good at all, to be honest. But I can't remember what... Two to three songs that I really like, man. I can't remember. They were, they were slamming. Maybe I think Prince Paul did the production on that shit, man. But yeah, Taste of Chocolate, not a good follow up to It's a Big Daddy thing that was released in 1990. Let me get to 1991 with Prince of Darkness. Um, another album that's like not that good, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Uh,. Raw 91, I think, was okay. The Come On Down with Q-Tip and Busta Rhymes was fire. That song was fire. 
Um, other than that, <laughs> some maybe some shit here and there, but it's not a good album either. I can't really fuck with it. The album cover is atrocious too. It's like some bitch laying in bed and Kane is like looking over her. I like stand next to the window on some like stalkerish shit. I don't know. <laughs> Looks like the movie poster for like a, a stalker movie or something. I, I don't. I can't fuck with it. The nigga just came with that soft shit on here too, and there's some shit that's okay, but. Nah. Then, in my personal opinion, Big Daddy Kane redeemed himself, in my opinion, with the amazing, close to amazing album. I want to say amazing. <laughs> I want to say banging. You know, it's pretty fucking good, man. I like this album. Looks like a job for it, released in 1993. You know, straight out the Juice Crew. Cold Chillin' Records, you know. If I didn't mention that, Kane is a Juice Crew member. But, uh, yeah, man. She get, uh, Niggas Never Learned, my fair track on that, hands down. How You Get a Record Deal. If I can remember some other tracks, huh? Fuck. He had a, some bitch song on here. I think Very Special with Spinderella from Salt and Pepper. The song don't really bother me, but everything else is pretty fucking dope. Good album. Definitely his third best in my personal opinion. 1993. You know, Kane got the hoodie on. Because everyone was trying to be hardcore since Onyx came out. You know what I mean? Like the, the niggas from the 80s were even getting it in. Um, So we get Daddy's Home. And Daddy's Home is an album I gotta revisit again, man. Because I don't... Only albums I honestly own from Kane physically... And have on my iPod is fucking um, Long Live the K Kane. Uh, it's a Big Daddy thing, and um, looks like a job for you know what I mean. The other joints I don't really care for enough to have or put on my iPod to keep it a buck with y'all. Um, so yeah, man, Daddy's home. Uh, what do I like on here? That that show and prove track, yeah, with Sauce Money. Shaheem, Jay Z, and those dirty bastard, and that's crazy because Sauce Money and Jay wasn't even known then like that. You know, what I mean, Jay Z was working with fucking uh, Jazz O with the Hawaiian Sophie fame, Hawaiian Sophie shit. Um, I'm saying Hawaiian Sophie fame because of that Machiavelli intro. <laughs> it's Hawaiian Sophie. That's what it's called. Uh, the Hawaiian Sophie. He's known for that. In, like what the late eighties. Um, didn't get pop until two years later with Reasonable Doubt, which is a fucking masterpiece. But, uh, OJD Bastard, he was known then, definitely. Shaheem, the rugged child, he was he was out. Um, Primo's on that fucking beat. Fire, I like that song. Um, yeah, man. <sighs> Just not shit that really stood out for me, you know what I mean? It's an okay album. It's not that good, in my opinion. Uh, for real. Then we get uh, 1998 with Veterans Day, and, and it's a pretty fucking solid album, I would say. Uncup, Uncup Pure by Easy Mo B is, is fire. And I gotta revisit that too, because I don't quite remember the whole shit, but that's a pretty good album from what I remember. Um, But it doesn't hold a candle to the first two. And I, I even like Looks Like a Job for Better Than This. But uh, yeah, Big Daddy Kane overall. <clears throat> Fantastic MC, uh, a fucking legend without a shadow of a doubt, should be looked at as as so. You know what I mean? Because the dude is just amazing. He's just incredible. You know, he has uh hasn't put an album since nineteen <laughs> out since nineteen ninety eight, but you know, he's one of the greatest MCs that ever lived. That is not a fucking question he, he just is you know what i mean and uh he's number four on my list but don't get it twisted i love big daddy king you know but i think he his discography is just lacking of good like straight classic albums that's just my opinion you know what i mean so there you have it so at number three this is a tough one man this one gets really tough because i love these niggas man so i would have to go with Oh 
this is tough. I would have to go with Rakim, even though I fucking love Rakim to death, but he's number three. You know, I know he's a little, little low with some niggas, but he's number three. Um, he's amazing. You know, before Rakim, niggas weren't really rhyming like this, you know, with those crazy metaphors and even multis at some time. The nigga was just fucking amazing. Like, before him, niggas were rapping like, Now when I'm on the mic, I'll be kicking the shit or something like that, you know, kind of that kind of format, that Run DMC type shit. And I love Run DMC to a, to an extent, I'm not going to lie. You know, I like them more. I like the late 80s stuff more, like uh, Tougher Than Leather and shit, you know what I mean? And uh, what's that joint? Raising Hell, 86 it came out, I think. Yeah, I hate the song, it's tricky though. I should trash in my opinion, I'm sorry. And niggas may look at me crazy, but I'm keeping it a fucking buck with y'all, you know? I love, they call it true school hip-hop, you know? I love certain shit from that era. Like the Fat Boys album from 84, that shit's fire, I love that. I love the Wild Style movie. You know, without these niggas, we wouldn't have hip-hop. Salute to all the fucking OGs. Salute to Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and Sugar Hill Gang. Even though, personally, I, I just can't bump that shit. I'm keeping it a buck. I just can't, man. You know what I mean? Like, Sugar Hill, like some disco shit. You know what I mean? I, it's just my opinion. I respect it to the fucking fullest. But I personally think hip-hop didn't get... Really, really dope until 1987 when Criminal Minded, Your Bomb Mercy Show, Paid in Full Drop. That's my opinion. Even though License to Ill from Beastie Boys came out in 86, which is fucking fire. LO Cool J came out with um, Radio in 85, I believe. That shit's fire. Like, I love that shit. Like I said, I love the first Fat Boys album. Don't get it twisted. I've seen not everything before 87 is whack fuck no i love hip-hop i love the true school shit but a lot of that shit's not my cup of tea to keep it a hundred with y'all just my opinion so rakim comes in the game and just body shit with his style of rhyming paid in full eric b and rakim um the whole album was like ghost produced by marley mall you know what i mean niggas thought eric b was the producer but that nigga just did the cuts like the scratches and shit i want to say but, uh, yeah, man, paid in full, phenomenal, move the crowd, I ain't no joke, a landmark album, I love every single track off that shit, fantastic, the album cover is superb, niggas rocking those fly dapper dance suits, flashing money with the gold links on their neck, like, I love 80s fashion, 80s fashion, like, late 80s fashion, like, the Ultra Magnetic MCs cover, uh, Critical Beatdown, rocking those Dapper Dan suits. That shit is fly as fuck. I love that shit. That's when Alpo, AZ, and Rich Porter was getting that money. You know what I mean? Th like, those suits don't look outdated to me. <laughs> it looks fly as fuck. I love it. But uh, paid in full, fantastic. Like I said, front to back, fucking banger. Um, then, we get, then we go to 1988, my favorite Eric B. and Rock Him album, Follow the Leader. A microphone Fiend. Oh, amazing. That album is just fucking flawless. The title track follow the leader. Like everything about that album is just perfect in my opinion. I love everything about it. It's it's the perfect hip hop album in my opinion, yo. It's fucking fantastic. Um if I had to choose between what well, see here's the thing. But three of these artists, Cool G Rap, Eric B and Rakim. Oh well Cool G Rap, Rakim, and um KRS, like they, they were in groups before they went solo, but you could say that group albums is their solo albums because they're like the main MC on all that shit. You know what I mean? Tiff for real. And the niggas they with didn't even do the fucking production. DJ Polo didn't do no production. You know what I mean? Well, Scott LaRock, I don't know if... I'm not sure if he did some shit. He probably did. And Kenny Parker, I'm pretty sure they did. But, uh, you know, Molly Maul did a lot of that shit. You know what I mean? Lost Professor did a lot of that shit for, you know, G-Rap and Rock Kim and shit. It wasn't Eric B and Polo, so... You know, if I had to choose between Rock Kim's work with Eric B or a solo work, I'm going with the work with Eric B. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's his his work anyway. It's his solo albums anyway, if you think about it. So Father Leader, like, is absolutely 
insanely good. That's my shit. And then we go to 1990 with Let the Rhythm Hit Him, which is another flawless motherfucking album. Production handled by Large Professor and Paul C. R.P. Paul C. I wonder why. Who the fuck would murder Paul C.? I don't know why he got shot and killed. I do not know why. I would like to know why. You know. I have no idea why. I try to look up on it, but I can't get information about it. Um, amazing producer, by the way. Um, father, um, my father leader. Let the Rhythm Hit Him is just fucking great. I love the album cover, too. Dope shit. Fantastic album. Rakim just kills shit on there. Flawless. Flawless album. I love every single track on that motherfucker. Great album. 1990. Then we get to 1992. Don't Sweat the Technique. You know, the, the big single that was off Juice, Know the Ledge. Fucking phenomenal. Casualties of War. Very street album. Damn, that might be my fucking third favorite, my nigga. Seriously. Excuse me. The yawn and shit. But yeah, man, just a, a perfect album, in my opinion. I love Don't Sweat the Technique. Every Eric B. and Rakim album is just fucking flawless, in my opinion. So this is 1992, and you know they break up or whatever, and then we don't get an album from Rakim until 1997 with the 18th letter, which in my opinion is a solid album. It's just too many bitch tracks, too many tracks for females. I think that's not Rakim's lane. Maybe one or two would be okay. I want that straight street shit on there, but that's an okay album. That's 1997. Then we get to 1999 with Master, or the Master, um... Okay album, not one of my favorites from him, but oh man, there's some, a lot of girl songs in there too, if I can remember correctly. I do have a hard copy on that, and it's on my iPod. I have a hard copy of all Rock Him shit, except the 2009 joint, which we get into. Um, what's the name of that shit? When I be on the mic, I believe that shit's fire. Love that fucking song. It's a it's a fantastic song. But that's Rock Him with the Master 1999. Could have been a lot better, in my opinion. But it's a lot better than this album right here, man. <laughs> uh, Rock Him's 2009 joint, man. Seven Seal or some shit like that. I gotta, I gotta find that. I gotta Google that for y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, the Seven Seal 2009 production was ass, and I wasn't feeling it whatsoever. <laughs> not a good album. Not a way to go out. If that's your last album, Rock Him. Wasn't feeling it, man. That shit was caca juice, my nigga. That shit was ass. Wasn't feeling it, man. Was not feeling it. I'm sorry. I'm I'm deeply sorry to y'all Rock Kim heads, but I love Rock Kim too. Don't get it fucked up. And that shit was not that good <laughs> at all, you know. But Rock Kim is amazing. A fucking flawless MC. Don't get that twisted. He is phenomenal. But there you go with Rock Kim at number three. Number two. Is the blast master himself, the teacher, KRS One, starting off with Boogie Down Productions, him and Scholar Rock, uh, Criminal Minded, 1987, flawless album, poetry, South Bronx, The Bridge Is Over, Super Ho, Nine Millimeter Go Bang, all that shit, all that shit, <laughs> a flawless album, fire. Oh, man, that's that, oh man. Either that or Sex and Violence is my favorite BDP album. Um, love it, man. Absolutely love it. Can't say nothing bad about that shit, man. I love it. I just love that album a lot. Um, then unfortunately, I think Scott LaRock would pass away a little after that, man. Which sucks. You know what I mean? I believe he's trying to break up a fight. Something along those lines. Oh shit, excuse me. But, um... Yeah, man, it, it's sad. It had to happen. And then we get to 1988 with... By All Means Necessary. Fantastic album again. My philosophy... Just... Uh, his work on it is, is phenomenal. He kills shit on there. Oh, I love that song, My Philosophy. The whole album is fucking great, 1988. Love the album cover, how we re 
It's like he redid the the famous picture of Malcolm X waiting by the window with the fucking AK in his hand. But I think in that picture he has a Uzi or some shit or a, a Mac 10 or something like that. I think it's a Uzi. I can't. I have the album physically and I have it on my iPod. But something along the lines of an Uzi, I want to say. <laughs> But that album cover is phenomenal. The album's phenomenal. Fucking great work. Um, by all means necessary in 1988. Flawless, in my opinion. Then we get to 1989 with Ghetto Music, The Blueprint of Hip Hop. Um, another fucking solid album. Um, in my opinion, I know I might get some fucking hate for this. It's not whack by any means. Fuck no. But it's probably my least favorite BDP album. But it's definitely good. For, for, for real. You know, it's really good. 89, you know, forgot my shit off that album, I gotta think, what the fuck, was, Jack was, was it Jack of Spades, if I can remember, yeah, that shit's banging, um, the title track, Ghetto Music, yeah, that's dope, um, good album, solid album, love the album cover, then we get to 1990, which was one of my favorite BDP albums, with Edutainment, you know, Love's Gonna Get You and shit like that, great, great album, love the, the skits and everything, the album is just fucking, it's fantastic, Love that album. It's so fucking good. Um, but yeah, it used to be at the top of my uh, favorite. And then I like we listened to Criminal Minded. And I was like, oh man, I don't know, man. You know? But it's definitely a solid album. 1990, Edutainment. Then we get to the last Boogie Down Productions album in 1992. Which is Sex and Violence. Which is... Damn near my favorite, either that or Criminal Minded, uh, what you got on there, motherfucking 13 and Good, um, Duck Down, the shit with motherfucking Freddie Fox, and cool, and, um, KRS-One going back and forth, bodying shit, oh, uh, it's so fucking good, I love that shit, I think it's, like, one of the best, like, back and forths ever, you know what I mean, like, niggas... They slay that shit. That's a great, great song. Um, yeah, man. I love the album cover, too. The album cover is, like, fucking dope as hell. Love the artwork. Um, very good album. One of 1992's best, in my opinion. You know, it's, it's just it's banging. That Duck Down shit is fire. <laughs> um, can't remember what else is on that motherfucker. Yeah, I gotta have the CD in front of me, y'all. My bad. But yeah, just a fucking great, great album. Um. So yeah. Boogie Down Productions, Sex and Violence. Then we get the KRS's solo career, man. We get to 1993. Hooks up with DJ Premier. And uh. He wanted to sound. It was an interview with KRS. He said he wanted to sound like Gangstar Daily Operation and shit. When he, you know. Called that shit Return to the Boom Bap and some fucking fire on there. Like. Sound of the Police, Mad Crew. Oh, that album is just fucking fantastic. My favorite solo KRS One album. There's no <laughs> denying that. There's no debating that, in my opinion. You know, if you have a different opinion, that's fine. Like, if you do, yeah, fuck that. If you say you like the KRS One solo better than that, I'm gonna, I ain't gonna hold you, nigga, because that shit's fire. <laughs> that 95 KRS album is just flames. I love it. But, uh, yeah, KRS-1 Attacks, Out of Here, Black Hop, Mad Crew, which is my favorite fucking song on the album. Uh, Fire, son. Love it. I Can't Wake Up. Dope concept. Love it. 1993, Return of the Boom Bap, a fucking masterwork of an album. Then we get to 1995 with his self-titled album, KRS-1. What a fucking album. Um, woof, man, the, the production that Primo did on two to three tracks, I can remember, MCs act like they don't know, oh my god, yo, when I hear that shit, my motherfucking head can't even stay on my shoulders, my nigga, that, I be bobbing that shit like a motherfucker, that is my shit, oh, it's so fucking good, it's so good, that song is just too fucking ill, too ill, man. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Then we get to, uh, Return of... What is it? Rappers Are in Danger. Love that shit. Great, great, great song. The whole album is fire, son. The whole fucking album, in my opinion. My personal opinion. It's the second best KRS album. 
Um, then we get his 1997 album, which honestly, yo, is to me the last greatest KRS album. In my personal opinion, and I might get some flack for this, and you're not a real hip hop head. And that's the last KRS album that I really, really checked out and fucked with. You know, say what y'all want about me. I know I'm a real fucking head, so y'all niggas can, you know, there's some niggas out there that are too fucking backpackerish and know it all niggas that I just want to fucking punch them in their vocal cords. But, uh, yeah, man. When I was in motherfucking, what, the fifth grade in 1997 when this dropped? When I step into the world was everywhere. They played it on my local radio stations like crazy. Seen the video. I fucking love that song. This album is phenomenal. I love it. Niggas say it went to commercial or some shit. Fuck that noise. Great album. I love I, I Got Next. Great, great album. And after that, I didn't check out nothing from nigga. I didn't check out nothing from the nigga, man. Nothing. I... Spiritual mind that I did check out, and I, I thought that shit was kind of whack. You know what I mean? Sorry. The, the sneak attack I heard about. But other than that, I didn't hear nothing. They say you got an album with Buckshot. That's good. I didn't hear that. I love Buckshot. I love Boot Can't Click to Death. But I, I didn't hear that. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not. I'm not familiar at all with his work. <laughs> After uh. I got next, man. I'm sorry. I'm just not. You know, I didn't hear the sneak attack album at all. Um, like I said, I heard Spiritual Minds and that shit was, uh. But he still got it, because in 2002, he fucking flamed that whole ass nigga Nelly. Flamed him in a battle. Not like a not like a freestyle battle, but in a beef. You know, they were beefing and shit. And he killed him. You know, bided him. So... Yeah, there's KRS, the, the Blast Master himself, one of the greatest MCs to ever fucking live. And then we get to my favorite of the big four that I'm talking about here. And I'm talking about the cool genius of rap, G and Connor, cool G rap. Man, oh man. <laughs> I'm a diehard cool G rap fan. Uh, what's, what's crazy is I, I just got his work physically, CD format, three... Well, I had four, five, six forever, but like this cool G rap and polo stuff, my nigga. I, I since nineteen ninety five when I was going shopping for cassettes, I couldn't find that shit anywhere. Only thing he ever had was four, five, six. I believe those albums went out of print very quickly because I'm talking. I, I lived the nineties, my nigga, and I didn't see like in ninety five when I started collecting. I didn't see live and let die and all that shit in the stores like I wanted. I wanted that shit forever because my uncle had the cassettes, you know. I wanted it for myself. But, um, yeah, man, let's get the G-Rap, man. Like I said, I just got the DJ Polo stuff, which cost me an arm and a fucking leg. We'll get to that later. But, um, yeah, man, we get, uh, 89, 1989 on Cold Chillin' Records. We get Road to the Riches. G-Rap, also a member of Juice Crew. Could you from Polo, Road to the Riches. Absolute classic album. Um, Man at Work. Uh, Road to the Riches, the title track. That whole f- album is just fire. Flawless album. We don't get the super gangster G-Rap yet, though, but still. Fantastic fucking album. Love it. Glad to own it physically. Great, great album. Um, then we get to 1990, Wanted Dead or Alive. This is looked at as the best G-Rap and Polo album. I would not debate that because I, I love it. It's my second favorite. It's a fantastic album. You know, Talk Like Sex. Um, a Race Racism with Big Daddy Kane and Bismarcky, his Juice Crew cohorts. Um, phenomenal fucking album. I think it's great. Not one bad song. Rikers Island, my favorite shit on there probably. Love it, man. Wanted Dead Alive is a fucking famous... Um album like people love it they talk about it a lot it, it, it's famously you know credited as being influential as well um but it's not my favorite but it's my second favorite uh fucking amazing album i love it to death so 1990s one i did it alive then we get to 1992 with live and let die 
personally my favorite G Rap album, period. <laughs> you know? Oh my god, nigga. Like Train Robbery is my favorite song on there, hands down. Grimy street gully shit at its fucking finest. Sir Jinx on the production. The whole fucking album. Molly Maul did Road to the Riches, I wanna say, and uh when I did her live it was like Lot Professor and Molly Maul, if I'm not mistaken. But um yeah, man, just an absolute flawless fucking album. I love Live and Let Die. Uh Two to the Head, which is features Ice Cube, Scarface, and Bushwick Bill. That's NWA and motherfucking ghetto boys right there, my nigga. What like what? Um, Operation C B. <laughs> Which is for Operation Cock Blocking. Oh my god. That that shit is funny as fuck. There's a line in there that had me in stitches, my nigga. Oh lord. You know, G-Rap just trying to get some pussy. Trying to get some head and shit. And every time he's trying to fuck with a bitch, here comes somebody cock blocking. You know, I, I had that situation happen to me too. And it's not fun. Um, Some little kid kept coming in, you know, which is the bitch's son and whatever. And he's like, uh, I couldn't even get a nut off. So I grabbed his Ninja Turtle doll and ripped the head off. That shit had me in absolute stitches. Oh, man. Funny shit. Fantastic fucking album, though. Love Live and Let Die to Death. Then we get to his solo stuff. 1995 or 456. The Fast Life featuring Nas. Impeccable song. Impeccable music video. Love it to death. Take him to war. The MF Grimm features on here. Fire. Absolutely love 456. It's it's my favorite Cool G Rap solo album. Hands the fuck down. Easily. Then we get to 1998 with his phenomenal album, Road, um, Roots of Evil. The storytelling is just fucking great. I love the storytelling. The storytelling is just fucking phenomenal. I absolutely love it. Um, That album is fantastic, man. Foul Cats. Let the Games Begin, which is my favorite off there, man. Oh, my God. I love that shit so much. So fucking good. Then we get to 2002 with uh the Giancana story. I wish I had this on CD. <coughs> I have it on my iPod, though. I have it digitally. And it's going for dumb money, hard copy-wise. So fuck that noise. I don't really need it, my nigga. If it's that much money, I just keep it on the iPod and bump it that way, yo. I used to be like, uh, I'm not going to bump it if I don't have a hard copy. But I don't do that shit anymore because... A lot of this shit, like, there's, there's two albums that I want really bad, hard copy-wise, and that's Milk Bone, The Milk Crate, and Real Live, The Turnaround, both from 1995. I think Turnaround is 96, I think, yeah, my bad. But, uh, yeah, I want that shit bad, man, but I ought to print like a bitch, so I gotta bump it on my iPod, which I don't mind, but I still want the CDs, that'd be great to have. Um, yeah, so we get to... 2002, I said the Gene Connor story. Pretty good. My Life featuring Capone and Noriega. There's a song with Prodigy on there that I really fucking like. Um, good album, man. Then we get to, uh, fuck, man, what's after that? Is it, uh, Riches, Royalty, and Respect? Some of that? 2011? My nigga. <laughs> I barely remember that. I had it on my old computer back in the day. I didn't re download it or nothing, but I do like it, but I can't remember nothing about it, to be 100% honest with y'all. So I gotta have to, I have to revisit that one, but it's pretty good. Then we get to his amazing collabo album with Necro. I'm a big Necro fan. I love his production. I love his rhymes. Um, the Godfather's album, Once Upon a Crime, 2013. Oh my God, my nigga. If y'all niggas slept on that, please listen to it, man. That shit is absolute heat. Heart attack. Unsub. The whole fucking record is just flames, man. Oh, that's that's a flawless fucking album. Great collaboration album. They did their fucking thing on there. Necro scorched the motherfucking production. Amazing album. Amazing, amazing album. I can't stress it enough. Probably my favorite album of 2013, my nigga. Probably. Love that album to death. Then we get Return of the Dawn, man, which is... Another solid album. I need that on hard copy before it sells the fuck out. Um, what's my shit on there? Rest in peace with my favorite niggas right now. Y'all know West Side Gun and Conway, Griselda and this bitch. Love that shit. Easy to corners on there. 
uh, Freeways on there. Um, Chic Lucha, I want to say. Maybe I'm fucking wrong. Raekwon. Mad Niggas on that album. That album's fire, son. I love that album. Great album. It didn't make my top 25 list, but it would be in the top 30. Um, Good album, man. Straight like that. I love that album. It's really good. So, yeah, man. The big four of hip-hop, in my opinion. Late 80s. Um, Motherfucking Big Daddy Kane. Rakim. KRS-One. Cool G motherfucking rap. Without these niggas, you would have no Big. No Pac. No Pun. No J. No Nas, no M, no Black Thought, no motherfucking Rock Marciano, Mayhem Loren, West Side Gun, Conway, Benny the Butcher. Now the niggas that I love, you would you wouldn't have these niggas. You wouldn't. You wouldn't have none of the niggas after the the, the fucking 80s, in my opinion. You wouldn't, cause these dudes are absolutely incredible, and they they put lyricism up to a fucking level. That couldn't be matched at that time. They own niggas. Now niggas might think I'm fucking nuts. But I do like Chuck D more than I like Big Daddy Kane. I think he should be in the big four in my opinion. But, you know, I just figured I'd do Kane because don't get into it. No, no, no slight towards Kane. It's just that I like Chuck D better, you know. But it's known that they're known as the big four. So I figured I'll just do that. As the episode, and I enjoyed it, man. Hope you enjoyed it as well. And you probably won't see me until February. So, uh, I will see y'all niggas on the flip side as always. I hope you enjoyed. This has been the Speed Get Club Podcast. I am your host, Mike Sears, and I'm signing off. Peace.